When my son started playing football last fall, the coach asked me if I could video the games so he could do some analysis of the team's play. Since I write software for the analysis of video as my job, I jumped at the opportunity. In this video, I want to show you what I did to help the coach analyze video for our team. I'll be using software called Transana. It's relatively inexpensive, and even though it's not explicitly designed for the analysis of sports video, it's got a lot of powerful features that make it quite useful for that task. The first thing I did was to shoot video of our first game from the sidelines. I learned a lot about recording video that first week. When I put that video into the computer and started watching it, I quickly noticed that it's not easy to tell where on the field you are in sideline video. Maybe you can see the yardage markers, but usually not. It's often a lot harder to tell how much the ball has moved on any given play than you'd think. I found that a little bit of audio commentary while I was recording was really useful. I found it really helpful in analyzing the game video if I announced the current yard line, the down, and the yards to go to first down for each play after I started the camera. If you want to track the performance of individual players, it might also be helpful to have someone assist you when you're recording to identify out loud the crucial players handling the ball on each play. It doesn't have to be color commentary, just something as simple as number 11 is in at quarterback, hands the ball to number 19. Don't count on being able to read jersey numbers in sideline video, and if you're like me, you may find it too difficult to capture good quality video at the same time you're trying to identify individual players. The point is, the more information you capture in your video's audio track, the easier your later analysis will be. Once I got home, I transferred the video from the camera to my computer. If you have the choice, capture the game as a single video file rather than having a separate video file for each play. It's much easier from an organizational standpoint, especially by the time the team has played a few games. If you have a camera that breaks each shot into a separate file, string all those files together in a video editing program to make a single video for the entire game. Once the video is ready, the next step is to bring the game video into Transana. You can see that I have the 2012 season here, and I have an entry for each game. Notice that I identify each game by year, month, and day so that they sort into the order that we played them in. The next thing I do is to make a play log for each game. The log is made up of a time code, which team was on offense, the down and yards to go, the current position of the ball on the field, and a space for special comments. These comments include things like if a play was a kickoff or a punt, if there was a touchdown, or if a penalty was called during the play. Putting a log entry together for each play often requires watching the following play. As I mentioned before, I developed the habit of stating the starting position of the ball for each play, and that was often the clearest way I had to determine how much yardage was gained or lost on the previous play. I found that including this information in the play log made the coding process that comes later much easier and faster, saving me time in the long run and allowing me to code more accurately. I mentioned that my play log includes a time code for each play. A time code is a special marker in Transana that links a spot in the play log with a spot in the media file. By inserting a time code at the start of each play, I can preview each play simply by right-clicking in the play log. First and five on the 42 after they move the ball six yards instead of five. It's important to get the time codes placed correctly, one at the start of each play, because the time codes are how Transana figures out when each play starts and ends. 
inserting a time code is as easy as positioning the video file and the cursor in the play log, then pressing Control T on the keyboard to link the two positions. Once the video is divided up into individual plays in the game log, the next step I take is to code each play. To do this, I first had to develop a simple coding scheme. The purpose of coding is to make it easy to analyze your game video in very flexible ways, so your coding scheme should reflect the things about each play that you find important. I'll show you my very simple coding scheme, but you can certainly expand the coding scheme to make it as complicated as you want for your own analysis. Developing a coding scheme takes a bit of time at the start of the first season you do it, and you'll probably improve it over the first couple of games you code. But once you settle on a coding scheme that works for you, you'll have it there for future use. The first category I created simply notes what game I'm coding. This allows me to pull up plays from individual games when I want to. The second coding category I created indicates what team is on offense for a given play. This allows me to easily separate our offensive plays from our defensive plays. The third category I code is down, and the fourth category is yards to go to the first down. This allows me to call up plays by down and distance when I want to. If you've ever wanted to compare how your team does on third and short versus how it does on third and long, you know why this is useful. The next category I code is type of play. I'm looking at middle schoolers, and I have a very simple set of codes here. If the play is a pass, is it a short pass behind the line of scrimmage or a long pass beyond the line of scrimmage? If it's a run, options include middle and outside runs, option plays, and reverses. But you can use as complicated a coding scheme as you want here. My next category is usually one I call key player, where I code the players involved in crucial roles in a given play. I've actually removed that category for creating this video as I don't want to accidentally include any identifying information about the players involved in the video and data I show here. The next category I code is the result of the play. This category includes several different types of information and I often include multiple codes from this category for a given play. Did the play gain or lose yards? Was a pass completed, dropped, or intercepted? Was there a fumble? a sack, or a penalty? Was there a score? I could have created several categories for all of this information, of course, but for my needs, this system works for now. I can always change it later if I need to, moving existing codes to new categories without losing any data. The final category I code is the number of yards gained or lost on a given play. I added this category mid-season, when questions started to come up that my simpler yards gained or lost codes in the results category couldn't answer. This information is useful for looking at game stats, as well as stats for individual players. I only coded this category for my team's offensive plays, not for the plays where the other team was on offense. I should mention that this coding scheme evolved across the season. You don't need to worry about getting everything set up just right at the start of the season. You can always make adjustments as you need to as the season progresses. Once my initial coding scheme was set up, I used Transana's Quick Clips feature to code the individual plays for each game. The process looks like this. First, I make sure that my game video has the appropriate code for the game category. I do that by clicking on the Keywords tab here and adding the keyword if necessary. By adding the keyword at the game level, I can be sure that every play clip I make for this game will automatically be coded with this keyword.
I also check the Options menu to make sure that the Quick Clips Warning option is turned off. We'll be adding multiple codes to each Quick Clip we create and don't need to be warned about the clip already existing when that happens. I then highlight each line from my game log one at a time. I usually start with the game's initial kickoff, but I'll start further into the game this time because I'm just demonstrating the creation of clips here. Let's start here. My game log tells me which team is on offense, so I double click the offensive team's code. Applying the first code usually creates a new clip. Additional codes will be added to the clip after that. My play log tells me down and yards to go, so I double click the appropriate values for those categories. In this case, first down, 10 yards to go. Now I right click the game log, and Transana shows me the play that I'm coding. First and 10 on the Region 28. After watching the play, I can code the play type and the results of the play. I can do a bit of quick math based on the play log and add the value for yards gained or lost. As mentioned before, I only code this last category for our team's offensive plays, not for the offensive plays of the other team. In this case, the play was a middle run. And the result was negative yardage. In this case, a loss of one yard. You may well be wondering what I've just accomplished by doing this. Let's take a look. We scroll up here to the collection section and we see something called the Quick Clips Collection. Inside that, we see our first clip. Let's double click this clip. That loads it in the Transana's interface. As you can see, we get just one line from our game log in the transcript area of the screen. When we press play in the video window, first and ten on the region twenty-eight. or right click on the play log or the visualization window, we get the video of just one play. When we click the keywords tab, we see what codes are assigned to this one play. The codes describe the play along the dimensions that we've chosen. It's important to note that Transana does not create a separate video file for each clip during this process. The clip we just created is a virtual clip only. It's just a data record that points to a specific part of a particular video file. There is a tool for creating such a separate video file, but most of the time it would be a waste of time and disk space to do that. At this point, let's right click our clip and choose Locate Clip in Episode. This takes us back to where we were before in our game log for the entire game. We can now proceed line by line, play by play, until we have coded video for the entire game. Once you're used to the system, it doesn't take long at all to create and code these clips. Here we have Offensive Team Gold. Second down, 11 yards to go. Second and 11 from the 27. We have a middle run, and the result was positive yardage 
a gain of 1. For our next clip, the offense is gold. We now have third down, 10 yards to go. Third and 10 from the 28, 3 to 28. We have an outside run that gained positive yardage, that earned a first down, and that gained 13 yards. When I'm done coding a game, I go to the Collections node and rename the Quick Clips collection to reflect the game date. That way, I can keep the clips from each game separate, which makes things easier when I want to find a specific clip to change its coding, for example. Once a game is coded, there are lots of options for exploring the data analytically. For example, I can right-click the game's episode record and choose Keyword Map. This map represents all the coding across the timeline for the whole game. It looks really complicated at first, but there are a lot of ways to customize it, and you can use it to see how the game went overall. For example, I've created configurations for just the offensive plays and just the defensive plays. And this allows us to see how we're doing on each side of the ball by exploring patterns in coding. One way this map gains power is that you can click on the bars in the report to load the underlying video clips. Left-clicking closes the map but right-clicking leaves the map open for further exploration. So let's look at our defensive plays and click on a bar for results negative yardage. Now we can see a play where our defense held the line well. First and 10 on the Cardinal 14. The keyword map is a great way to find plays that meet certain relatively simple criteria. Once identified, these clips can easily be copied into a new collection of specific clips that we want to share with coaches, individual players, or the team as a whole. I can also request the episode report, which is basically a text version of the keyword map. The summary section at the bottom, where we can see how frequently each code was used, can be very interesting. Another great way to explore the data, particularly to look at data across games, is using Transana's search tool. The search tool allows us to specify complex criteria to sort through our coded data. To access the search tool, right-click the search node in the database tree and choose Search. Let's start by creating a relatively simple search. Let's look for plays where the offensive team was gold and where the result of the play 
was a touchdown. The scope of this search is our entire database, which at the moment contains all of our games from the 2012 season. What we get as the result of the search is a node with all of the clips where the gold team scored a touchdown. We can go to Options, Presentation Mode, Video Only, and then right-click the search node and choose Play All Clips to see all of these plays one after another. On the other side's 44 yard line. It is second and 20 something. from the 15 following the offsides. We can also right-click the search results to get a collection report that covers just these search results. If we look at the collection report for our touchdown plays only, for example, we can quickly see that our touchdowns almost always came from big plays. We only scored one touchdown of less than 20 yards, and we only scored two touchdowns of less than 40 yards all season. Whether that means we're a great big play team or that means that we need to work on our short yardage game is up to the coach to decide, but our video analysis helped us notice something about the way we play that we might not have noticed otherwise. I hope this video has given you some ideas of the ways that video analysis can help you make sense out of game video, how to go beyond just watching the film and forming general impressions. And while I haven't really gone into detail about how Transana works, I hope I've given you at least an overview and some sense of how the program works and what tools are available. For more information about Transana, or to contact me with questions about how to use the program to analyze your sports video, please go to the program website at www. Transana.org. There's a ton of information about the program there, including a section about how much different versions of the program cost and how to purchase it if you're interested. There's also a contact form on the website that allows you to send me your questions. Thanks very much.